Hello again, so we're going to do another micro lecture. This one's on graphing velocity in free fall. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, so one to two sentence summary and your follow-up questions on Google Forms. Our objective is to graph, uh, which we'll get to in a second. This is a previous slide. So if you remember before, we talked about the equation for figuring out the velocity of something while it's falling. We plugged in g instead of a, and as a result, we could figure out the velocity. Well, to figure out what pattern this is, or relationship, between um, velocity and time, we're going to switch that a uh, little bit, and that way we can look at our objective, which is what is the relationship or pattern between velocity and time for free fall. The reason why is because now I can map this to which pattern it follows. In this case, it happens to be linear, where y is your final velocity, your slope is gravity, your uh, x value is the time, and your y-intercept is the initial velocity. And so we can see how this plays out in graphs now. In this case, if I had an initial velocity of zero, it's going to start at the origin. If, my, if we're assuming down is negative, then we always get a slope of negative 9.8, or negative 10, if that's what you're using. If instead we wanted to assume down was positive instead of negative, it'd be the same graph, it would just be going up instead. So we would have a positive 9.8 slope. Now, if we went back and were imagining down as negative, but said, you know, what happens if it starts with an upward velocity of 4? Well, that just looks like this now instead. It's starting with a positive um, velocity of 4, where down is negative, up is positive. Then, that means it starts with an upward velocity of 4, but gravity is going to be slowing it down at first, and eventually it's going to switch directions and go the other direction. So our slope here is negative 9.8. It stops right at this point right here, because that's a zero velocity. And this is what the graph would look like. If instead we wanted to assume that down was positive, but for the same thing, an initial upward velocity of uh, 4, then what that would look like is, well, up is negative now and down is positive, so it would just be a positive slope, going the exact opposite direction, but same graph, essentially. So to come up with these graphs, uh, we're just going to be plugging into final velocity equals initial velocity plus gravity times time uh, over and over and over and over again. So this is literally what we just looked at, the graph of velocity versus time for rock thrown straight up with a velocity of 30 meters per second. In this one, we're going to assume up is positive and that gravity is negative 10 meters per second squared just to make life a little easier. So I'm going to make a t-chart just so I can plot my values really easily. At time of zero, the velocity is going to be 30. And we can see that by plugging into these values here, where our time goes in right here, uh, our initial velocity is right there, and it comes out to value of 30. If we want to look at the, the velocity for after one second, we would again plug in our values and we would see that it comes out to 20. Again, it comes out to 10, and maybe you notice this pattern already, It'd be 0 at 3 seconds. Then it would go negative 10, and negative 20, and negative 30. So in this case, at first it's slowing down while it's moving upwards. Then gravity finally stops it right here at 3, and it begins to pull it downwards uh, and have it pick up speed as it goes down further and further. So if we look at this, we can actually calculate the slope, and it comes out to a slope of negative 10, because that is what we were using for our value for gravity here. So in this case, graphs will always have a slope equal to gravity if you're graphing something in free fall. That's it for this one. Three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and your follow-up questions on Google Forms, please.